Personal Finance PowerPoint Presentation. Forward Dividend Yield. Prepare to get financially fit by practicing personal finance. Most of this information comes from Investopedia Forward Dividend Yield, which you can find online. Take a look at the references, resources, continue your research from there. This by James Chen, updated June 7, 2022. In prior presentations, we've been taking a look at investment goals, investment strategies, investment tools, keeping in mind the two major categories of investments, that being fixed income or bonds and equities or typically common stocks. Also keep in mind your investment tools and strategies. For example, if you're investing for a retirement, for example, you might be using tools such as mutual funds and ETFs, and those tools will help to pool together the resources with other investors and investments and help to diversify the portfolio. If you're using that strategy, you might not be doing so much analyzing of individual stocks, but instead, trying to find a diversified portfolio, possibly analyzing sectors, possibly looking at indexes. When we're going to be picking and choosing individual stocks, and then we're going to be drilling down on those financial statements more likely and doing our ratio analysis on them, which is what we might be looking at here when we think about what is a forward dividend yield. So a forward dividend yield is an estimation of a year's dividend expressed as a percentage of the current stock price. So the year's projected dividend is measured by taking a stock's most recent actual dividend payment and annualizing it. So remember what dividends are. We're talking about the corporation stock. We own the stock. Therefore, we have an ownership in the company. Companies are a separate legal entity. Their entity of ownership is broken out into equivalent units of stock. Typically, we're talking about publicly traded companies, those corporations that have gone public and are on exchanges. And then the dividends represent the earnings that are being distributed out to the owners or the stockholders. They are similar to draws for a partnership or sole proprietorship in that draws for a partnership, for example, represent earnings that have accumulated and then we the partner take the money out for our own personal use with a corporation we can't just have one share take out money that's different than the other share all the shares have to be the same and therefore the dividends that are given have to be determined not by one individual shareholder but instead by the company board of directors and uh, the management so then the question is, well, how can we predict what the dividends will be in the future? The management might give us some guidance on what that would be, but from a particular, from a general standpoint, stocks, the corporations don't like to decrease dividends. So you would think that as they increase dividends, they would either be where they currently are or going, going higher you know, in the future. So if we take the, the latest dividend that has been given out and try to annualize that dividend, that might be a fairly good way most of the time to determine what we think the dividends will be going forward. So the forward dividend yield is calculated by dividing a year's worth of future dividend payments by a stock's current share price. So now we're thinking about, okay, we're going to figure what we think the dividends are going to be from this point, basically going forward for a year, even though the dividends might be paying out quarterly or something like that, or even monthly or something, we're going to figure out for a year, because that's the typical calculation we do when we compare it then to the price, which is the market price determined by the market for the stock. So understanding a forward dividend yield, for example, if a company pays a Q1 dividend of 25 cents and you assume the company's dividend will be consistent, the firm will be expected to pay $1 in dividends over the course of the year because that's gonna be 25 cents times four quarters. So if the stock price is $10, the forward dividend yield is 10%. So that's gonna be the one over uh, 10 or 10% 10 for the dividend yield. The opposite of a forward dividend yield is a trailing dividend yield, which shows a company's actual dividend payments relate relative to its share price over the previous 12 months. So instead of us taking the latest one and going forward, we can go back and notice that these two things could be the same because they, it could be that the company didn't change their dividend practice, right? They're going to be consistent on their dividends, but we would expect that if a company is doing well, they're going to try to increase their dividends possibly, and they're going to try not to decrease their dividends. So when they do make an increase, 
uh, they're, they're, we would expect that they're, they're pretty confident about their position typically because they don't want to have to re reverse that decision in the future generally. So when future dividend payments are not predictable, the trailing dividend yield can be one way to measure value. When future dividend payments are predictable or have been announced, the forward dividend yield is a more accurate tool. In other words, the, the prior dividend yield could be a good good tool. It's accurate in, in, a, in as what it says. However, it's not giving us as relevant information, I would think is a, is a better way to put it for what we want to do, which is to determine the value of the stock for the future. So we're trying to be making a decision at the margin. So we're trying to figure out what the dividend yield will be here going forward at the margin. An additional form of dividend yield is the indicate is indicated yield or the dividend yield that one share of stock would return based on its current indicated dividend. To calculate indicated yield, multiply the most recent dividend issued by the number of annual dividend payments, the indicated dividend, divide the product by the most current share price. So we got the indicated yield is going to be the most recent dividend times the dividend payments each year divided by the stock price to market price. For example, if a stock trading at $100 has a most recent quarterly dividend of 50 cents, the indicated yield would be the 50 cents times four divided by 100. And again, the concept here being we're trying to make the decision at the margin, basically, you know, going forward from this time and putting it in terms of a year because that's how we usually like to be basically comparing things to the stock price. So here's an image of just basically the share price, which is determined by the market, the dividends being paid out on a quarterly basis. So we've got the four dividends, the dividend yield equals the annual dividends divided by the share price. Annual dividends would be all of the four quarter dividends. Note that the company doesn't have to give dividends to out quarterly. They can choose to give dividends out whenever they want but it's fairly standard to give to see like quarterly dividends. Forward dividend yields and corporate dividend policy. A company's board of directors determines the dividend policy of the company. In general, more mutual and established companies issue dividends while younger, rapidly growing firms often choose to put any excess profits back into the company for research, development and expansion. So again, we as the shareholders don't determine what the dividends will be as we would kind of determine if we were like a partnership or something like that because the individual shares have to be the same in nature we can't have like we could have one partner drawing out more more or less than another partner but we can't really have that on the stocks because the stocks have to all be uniform we can as shareholders vote for the board of directors for example and pressure them to to give us more dividends but as individual investors we usually don't have that much influence so we're kind of subject to what the the company is going to determine the dividends to be common types of dividend policies include the stable dividend policy in which the company issues dividends when earnings are up or down the goal of a stable dividend policy is to align with the firm's goal for long-term growth instead of its quarterly earnings volatility with a constant dividend policy a company issues a dividend each year based on the percent of the company's earnings so we could of course look at what the company is, is telling us in terms of how they're going to structure their dividends again in general you, they kind of like dividends going up and not down but if consistency is the key so if they basically say hey we're going to take we're going to have our dividends be consistent tied to say income in some way then we could use we obviously that would be relevant information to help us to predict what the dividends will be in the future based on we'd have to then predict what their revenue is going to be in the future with the uh, constant dividend investors experience the full volatility of company earnings uh, finally with a residual dividend policy a company pays out any earnings after it pays for its own capital expenditures and working capital needs so the company might say hey look i'm going to pay for what we need to get done in the company and this makes sense because the idea is that the company is trying to is trying to give the maximum value to the owners the the investors the stockholders and how do they do that well they're going to reinvest it if they can because we would think that the reinvestment would earn them a higher return than if they gave us the money so if you can reinvest it by equipment by capital and stuff like that then and earn a return on it then do it 
but if you've already bought all that stuff and then the, the added money shouldn't just be sitting on the books you should give it to the owners so the owners can invest it somewhere else where it's earning money so what is a good dividend yield generally a dividend yield between two percent and six percent is considered a good dividend yield yields above six percent are considered to be higher risk stocks which depending on the investor's risk tolerance may be a risky investment not worth exploring as of march 10th 2022 the average dividend yield for the s p 500 since inception is 4.29 percent and its current dividend yield is 1.42 percent so what is a good pe price earnings ratio the higher the pe ratio uh, price earnings uh, ratio means the more willing investors are to pay a higher share price now for a stock with the expectation of growth in the future so the average pe uh priced earnings ratio of the s p 500 since inception is 15.97 while its current pe ratio is 24.29 does telsa pay dividends uh, no telsa has not and does not intend on paying dividends the company believes in keeping its retained earnings to fund growth of the company so it's a, a this is tesla is a is a classic kind of example of uh, types of companies that that needs a lot of capital investment so obviously as tesla is growing then it, as long as as long as they are able to take the money that they're getting and invest it in factories and whatnot so that they can generate a higher return on that investment than the money that we could have if we invested somewhere else people are willing to invest in tesla because they're not doing it to get the dividends in that case they're doing it to get a growth in the value uh, of of that particular stock and so that's going to be of course the trade-off now there'll probably be some point in the future if tesla becomes well established as basically the the you know manufacturing company of of cars or something like that then that they don't need to buy more plants or build more plants or something like that and at that point in time then they'll be at the top of their growth cycle they might then be in a position to give more you know steady dividends so we'll see in the future